Why did we decide to do crowns and fiber posts after endodontic treatment? Let's discuss together. New BG Dental case. So dear friends, we welcome you on our YouTube channel and this time we would like to present you a new clinical case post endo rehabilitation or endodontics and post endo rehabilitation utilizing crowns, utilizing fiber posts. In that clinical case I will also give you some tips and tricks related to endo and restorative protocols that are related to endodontic treatments. So this is what we are going to discuss with you right now. Here is initial situation. You can see the date from 2012. A pretty old case, a pretty big case actually. It was a full mass rehabilitation. And from the vestibular point of view, you can see that these teeth are restored with composite, with uh, discolorations. And from palatal side, we can see also that teeth are builded up with composite resin material. So the first answer that I raised up in our teaser was why did we decide to do crowns after an endodontic treatment? I will answer right now because these are already crowns. You can see that these are crowns made in patient mouth directly with composite material. Sometimes patients do not understand what is actually crown. And if you say that in your case you need to put to make to, we need to put a crown, they they become upset because for some people the term crown is like, you know, um, is like a mark that they become older or like a crown is the type of restoration for old people, let's say. But these are crowns actually and we have to deliver information that the, the crown is a, just a type of restoration and if you don't want to use this word, just use ceramic restoration or composite restoration and these can be crown, veneer, semi-crown, three-quarter crown, veneer 360 degrees or full contour veneer. You can have a lot of different terms, but at the end of the day, these are crowns. And in this case, as I mentioned, this, uh, this is a complex rehabilitation when we are going to rise up a bite, so we increase vertical dimension of occlusion. And for that kind of cases, we definitely need to have something from the palatal side to uh, design proper static and dynamic contacts. So, the first answer was given, then we moved into the phase of restoration replacement. So we replaced the old composite restoration, some carries defects, and we ended up with that view that you can see from that slide. What we can see? We can see very uh, preferable situation for next restorative step. In this case, we have ferrule, which is very important to have in case if you are going to go to make um, a retentive restoration like a crown, for example, you are going to use PFM or zirconia crowns that will be cemented instead of bonding. So in that case, definitely you are relying on macro mechanical retention. So for macro mechanical retention, we have to have a rule. And in this case, we have a rule. Look, here we have pretty nice ferrule. I would like to remind you some information re related, sorry, related to ferrule. We have, according to the classic, um, classic information, the length or the height of ferrule, the minimum has to be 1.5 millimeters, okay? And the thickness, the thickness is this, okay? the thickness of these walls. Ideally, the thickness has to be one millimeter, okay? The thickness, one millimeter. So this is what we would like to achieve for mechanical retention. If you have a case when everything is destroyed, gum level or even below the gum, you may try to do few things to save the tooth. Probably surgical lengthening, in this case you can make gain some through, or orthodontic extrusion that may help you also to get a through. If not, 
the restoration will be very compromised. So maybe extraction and implant will be great in such a case, in such a particular case. By the way, if you guys want to have more information about post-endodontic rehabilitation using uh, crowns, fiber posts, or maybe build-ups and the preparations for uh, onlays or overlays, we have a very nice uh, online masterclass that you may find on our webpage. You can find the link uh, in the text below this video. So that is the one and a half hours very practical masterclass that I'm showing you step by step restorations, preparations, and explanation of the, um, the features of post endodontic rehabilitation. So feel free to sign. We got a very uh, good feedbacks from participants. Everybody loved the program and it is very practical and you can use information straight after watching our online masterclass. So, in such a case we have a rule and if I go, if I'm going to use my, um, let's say, metal-free ceramic restorations like uh, Emax crowns, for example, or Impress, CAD multi-crown or whatever, we can actually rely on that structures to be bonded to and we can go for a fiber post. This is my preference. If I have a tooth that is shorter, now regarding the teeth, if the tooth is shorter, then um, then three millimeters. If it is shorter than three millimeters, I will go for fiber post and core and then crown preparation. If longer, I can just do build up and then I go for the crown. And that's it. It's pretty simple. Okay, so in such a case, we made um, isolation, a pretty nice isolation. Everything was sealed everywhere and then we started to do our endodontic retreatments we removed posts and in one of these incisors we realized that we have open apex this is the picture from the microscope with a very high resolution with a high uh, sorry magnification so the quality is not very uh, very brilliant but anyways you may see here periodontium okay so that is periodontium you can see a very large apex so the size of this apex was more than 60 or 70 according to the ISO and the classic way of obturation is very compromised in such a case so I I prefer to make an apical seal uh, for such a cases with MTA for example and here is the trick uh, I use gray MTA. The gray MTA is pretty fast set, but still I want to be sure that my MTA is already set. So what I did, I placed MTA, then I covered this, this root canal and the entrance, the access cavity with a temporary material, just not to let anything to go in, and I was working with adjacent teeth. I made my retreatment on adjacent teeth, even I placed a fiber post, you can see here. I made a build up, okay? So I spent some time working with adjacent teeth, and that time was enough to be sure to check if my MTA set. I checked my MTA, completely set, so I was pretty happy. Then I finished this tooth with a single appointment. If you guys want to know more about endo, primary endo retreatments and also post operative uh, post endodontic rehabilitation i'm kindly inviting you to come here to our training center in kiev ukraine we have two days practical hands-on workshop just for seven people where we're learning primary endo retreatments and post endodontic rehabilitation on natural teeth integrated into the phantom so everything is very natural looking and very close to real clinical conditions with a full um, assistance from my side. So feel free to come and to learn and to implement this information straight after the course in your daily practice. Big endo rest of course. The link is below this video in description. 
This video is about benefits that you will have from our online workshop. Presence Effect. This is a unique feature by Belgrad Academy that literally moves you to our training center and you can stay close to speaker. This is like over shoulder format. The training process is filmed through the video system from the microscope and there are two more cameras broadcasting close up and general view. This way you can see everything in precise details. Efficiency. Do you agree guys that over shoulder workshop with detailed video and explanation is way better than regular slides? The third benefit is convenience. So basically you don't need to go anywhere and you can study in comfort conditions. In your home, in your office, during running exercises, from your phone, from your computer, from your tablet, and you can do anything you want with the content. So join us as we shifted online education into the next level. So we ended up with preps and you see we have a very good ferrule everywhere. So basically we even can do a PFM crowns here. So no problem at all. But anyways, we still we, we decided to go for for um, for um, metal free crowns like Emacs. And the, the thing is that I gain a little bit more ferrule by moving my finish lines slightly sub gingival. So we also reserved space there to gain at least two or maybe even three millimeters. And we were very happy with. So we ended up with um, ceramic restoration straight after. Here you can see some artistic pictures. And we have a follow-up. That picture was, was taken in uh, 2019, so basically seven years after cementation. It look not bad, actually. Now we are in uh, 2021. Actually, this um, episode is uh, filming, is being filmed in December 2021. So if you're watching it in 2022, these teeth are still in patient's mouth, these restorations are still working, and patient is still happy with. So we have long-term follow-up with the new um, ceramic rounds in a big full mouth rehab case with good uh, biological and aesthetic integration, and everybody is happy. And I will be happy if you will write down your feedback uh, about this case. I hope you enjoyed some practical tips and tricks that I shared with you here. And I will be more than happy to see you here in our training center for the, for the hands-on courses or maybe in our online platform for online master classes. I wish you to be healthy and may the dental force be with you. Bye-bye.